control centre. So the request was put in for the leaves to behave as normal, budding where appropriate in the shady designations. Clearance for early division, albeit dependent on rainfall, was given in circumstances ripe for butterflies. He thought, could they but smell the cherry blossom, they would spend less time on deathly prose missives and the furnishing of their offices from where daily blood trains, leaving the pallid walls and dried tears of utterly forgotten sensations. But he was one of them, peddling memos as the roses raged scent through a window designed to open the merest crack, lest his dry scream be heard in the petals, who remembered him before implant strictures. Dim memory of a lavender drift before categorization. They had been watching him develop unruly empathy as he plotted the fly allocation paths and dandelion tilts. He knew Erasure's promise, and with a remaining ganglion free, stealthily raised himself to the sill, an ant disobeying. Dawn Song Some kind of vacuum pump outside the window, leaves, block drains, grubby footwells, the suction sags the dawn lung of light, and is a brackish slant in the lifted blind. Why so early to be frantic? It must be blockages fit to burst, wheels of filth at the tree roots, the soak away, the saturated socks. Coming up from the depths with booster motor, stuff best left surely till the first coffee bites. But that urgency of angling the head into gripped corners, a panting of flexible hose, snaking into a rat's den where sharp eyes glint before popping. A twig resists by desperate attachment to pile. The scuffs of sharp bends and emergency braking will not lift until the air gives up its ghost in the filled bag. That collected bolus is no kind of breakfast. I'll not other than spit toast into the mix, an offering to appease the pursing machine lips, unless it pulls out my heart and innards with it, because that is its desire, its lustful gravity at the window now, seeking anything trading in early light and breath, moulded plastic elbows at the latch and hot throat to herald its black hole boiling with masticated dust. Festa, these zones, the corruption glimmer of the mouths of alleyways, pinched exhalation between the Croydon monoliths, a caries that beckon, stench a finger trace the neural network of Festa, these zones hosed of their denizens just in time for glass plate tourists, CGI selfie sticks at the handle of best practice urban renewal schemes, but the tramp remnant everywhere, the absent bodies fruiting at the nostrils, the umbrella hovels flattened as insect spokes ironed into the concrete, sweat patches of long sleeps near aircon outlets. No, sir, please come this way. I can assure you even these interstices can be retail plugs for a thin franchise. Multi-use brochures in your welcome pack. You are welcome, sir. Footfall 1969. Arthur, Norbert, me and my brother Chris, October mist and clouds of breath, the ring of trees, the only time three generations took to the field together. I wanted to be Norman Hunter, but Chris bagged him, so I had to settle for Billy Bremner. The heavy old leather preferred punting tracks through the silver grass, days of lofted crosses long gone. Arthur surprisingly nimble on the ball, deft side steps punctuated by smoker's cough. Norbert flying down the wing, pipe clamped in jaw, a miniature railway of short puffs, Chris skull hanging at both ends. Was it here that ineptitude was born? I mastered air kicks and scuffs to all corners of the park, towed one between pear trees, if only they'd been goalposts, half-time emphysema and the reigniting of pipes or tunnel mist of St. Bruno, sandpaper hacks and tactics. I did play a decent ball into the box, but even Bobby Moore couldn't block it. it was my birthday, so I suppose they let me win. A rattle of applause from the few remaining leaves, I kicked the wheezing ball into the shed, lying for decades between rake and spade. Forward. That assemblage of pretentious superscriptions, 
one that is generally of far greater import than the poem that follows, was, in this case, entirely absent apart from a pithy row of asterisks that indicated a pithy row of absences somehow dancing attendance on the poem. Such bereft lacunae could only set the work in context of withheld resonances that rung hollow bells of non-recognition among those whose eager vacancy towards the poet's work had only been noted in its never having been noted. The poem then continued as follows. Goldfinch Elegy that sun-mirror yellow that flashes, the red crown tilting for seeds, hidden dapple on tail feather, claw purchase and jostle for perch. Such perpetual musculature when still wings a new silence, leaf freeze, breeze halt, and song cessation, no throat mourns or calls. Shy goldens come to feed as flies unsure hover for rank not yet sniffed. That stillness, a hollow carved for death, grass tear tilt to breathless wind. Flower heads mast half a sun, apology for summer's sap continuance. Only unfreeze as burial music in clawed leaves begins. Hot new Burberry colours. Blaze of gamboge suddenly burning at catwalk neon as pulse swell in veins by overdriven guitar. Sequin sequence in predator walk heels planted on waist spindles and hollow cheeked chic synth glitter drums. Zip frenzy fingernail burn in a court seam. Flesh squeezed out of that puce mini dress floodlit. The beats hump louder than designer cigar backroom scurry for unsold sunglasses smoke finish. Fire patterned degrade, or is it real fire that eats the hem? Phew, it's hot, those cutting edge hues. Voguing via gas mask, a bold new ochre design, light the hot couture touch paper on his six pack. Coloratura screams at Marshall Fuzzbox meltdown as toppling from lace cape operatic jumpsuit. Hip sway through mosaic gold lighted faggots, she's a scorcher in melting heels, it's right for the company. That wig is fucked from the desperate wings, but not lopsided, flame fingered the smell of silvering hair. Don't wait for them to strip, ignite for share float and brand optimize thousand salmon blazer incinerate. Image placement bonfire of fiscal sanity embers, the perverse struck match of the profit bias. From talk to sable to ash, the fabric crumble, season's end, oxblood combustible pot latch. Mannequins and models, cutting and stitching last year's flesh into sleek boardroom balance sheets, where obsolescence unclothes to nakedness the price-fixed decadence, a mountain of smouldering silk, 